Welcome to another video. In the previous video, we have seen how we can calculate performance criteria for your model, such as Nash Sutcliffe efficiency and P bias. In this video, we will see how we can perform a manual calibration. Basically, I will be showing you how you can change parameters and we will see the effect of change of parameter on a model. It is important to check the performance of the initial model before you start calibration. This will help you decide which parameters you should calibrate. For instance, if your model has problems predicting evapotranspiration, then you can target crop parameters. If it has to do with flow, then you can target parameters that affect flow, such as curve number, Manning's coefficient, or even lateral length. Many times, it's much easier to identify parameters that have a big influence on your model by performing a sensitivity analysis. We will do that in another video. If you remember very well, in the previous video, we were only printing results at monthly time step. What I will do is, I will print the results at the day time step and I will save the file, then I will change a parameter and then we will compare before and after changing the parameter. I can easily do it by coming to print and then channel, check the channel SD, save changes, and I will write these files. So overwriting the existing ones. Okay, so I will run the model. But before I run the model, I need to enable printing of CSV files so that it's easier to extract flow time series from the daily time step file. So look for print, print the PRT, I come here, say Y, and save using the shortcut, close. Then I can run. Now speed this up. All right, now that it's done, I will close this and I will look for channel. The daily time step channel, channel DST CS3. I will click that. Okay, let me maximize this. Here we're going to look for the column that has flow out. We can find that if we scroll to the right, here is flow out AV. Then we don't need the other columns, so we can happily delete them. And from previous videos, we know that the main outlet for our watershed is channel 53. So we'll filter to only get results for channel 53. Filter, channel name, we look for 53. Here it is. Okay. And that means these are the flow values for channel 53 at daily time step. So we use the shortcut control shift down to select the entire column up to the end. Copy that. And we're going to paste it in a new Excel file. So this is going to be before parameter change, okay? And we know it's starting from 1992, one forward slash, one forward slash, 1992. And with this, we can just double tap here, or double click here, and then that's our date. This is going to be after parameter change. So I'm going to change this to after. So, so far, we can already plot this graph, insert, there you go. We have not added the data for after parameter change, so we only have one. And I'm going to zoom into this axis, 
Okay, so that I'll make that five. And I'll make this six. Okay. So I'm just going to move this to the top. All right. So we will run again. We will change a parameter and then we will compare before and after and see the effect of the parameter. Go back to SWAT editor. So to change a parameter, you have to go to change section. And this is found here. Change. And the kind of calibration we want to do is hard calibration because we're imposing a parameter that we want. So to add a parameter to the calibration, first of all, you have to say create new record. And then you look for a parameter that you want to change. So in our case, let's try changing the curve number, for instance, CN2. This is one of the most sensitive parameters. Something to notice, especially for those who have used SWAT before. When you change parameters in SWAT Plus, you're actually providing a different file that will override the default parameters. Unlike in the old SWAT, where the parameters were written to each and every file that is associated with that parameter, in SWAT Plus, the parameters are written to a file called calibration.cal and the model will first of all read that calibration.cal and will perform the changes without touching the original parameters. So there are different types of changes that you can specify. And for each of the parameters that you set, you have to specify the type of change that you want. Do you want to replace the parameter that was already there? Then you have to say, change the value of the parameter. That means if you specify the value here, let's say you're going to say negative 20. If you specify this value and then you select this kind of change, it's going to put wherever you have curve number, negative 20. The other type of change is change the value by the specified amount. In this case, if the original parameter was 80, for instance, it's going to become 60. It's going to just subtract because this is a negative change. And if it's positive, it's going to add to that. Lastly, you can change by percentage. So this negative 20 means that the original parameter is going to be reduced by 20% because of this negative. If it was positive, then it would be increased by 20%. In our case, we want to reduce the original curve number by 20%. After you click save, then you are given a chance to specify to which objects you want to apply the curve number parameter change. Save. And here you can select which HRUs you want this to apply to. If you don't select any HRU, it is going to apply to all HRUs. Just say save and go back. So now we have a new record of curve number change by percentage change, reduced by 20% the original value applied to all HRUs. Now, before I run the model, I want to show you the file CIO. This is one of the files that we did not discuss in part five. The file CIO lists all the files that are used in the model simulation. So let me go back to the TXT out folder, look for file CIO. So file CIO, open that. Here we see a lot of files that are used in the simulation. Time.sim, print.prt. Some are new. That means the model is not going to use that specific file that is supposed to be listed there. For calibration, the files are listed in the change line, chg. And here we see that we only have calpalms.cal. This lists all the parameters that you can calibrate. And here you have now, this is where you have the calibration.cal file. When we write files before running the model, this is going to change to calibration.cal. Let's do that. 
I will first of all close this and come back here. Go to right and right. Now, if I go back to TXT out folder here and on open file CIO again, I will see we have calibration.cal. So I will look for this file calibration.cal. Okay, here it is. We only have one parameter that we are going to calibrate it's the curve number, and the kind of change is percent change. We are reducing by 20% and we are applying it to all the object. Now, you might also be wondering, how do you know what kind of object this is going to apply to? You can check the cow palms file. And I'm just going to sort by name. There you go. Cow palms file. It gives you for each parameter, what kind of object you will be targeting. So curve number is for HRU. And this is the absolute minimum and absolute maximum. And this column gives you the unit. You can see other parameters such as ESCO, EPCO, and all the others such, uh, that apply to the soil, to the entire basin, and uh, to channels and aquifers, and so on. Now, now that we have written the files again, I'm just going to make sure that we are printing the CSVs. So print.brt. Activate by saying Y for yes, save and close. And then I will run the model again. So this time I'm just going to sort by size and then run. Okay. Seems like there is an error. Let's check what happened. Oh, we have to close this file because it's going to write to this file. So we close that one. Let's try that again. All right. I will speed this up again. All right. Now that it has finished, I will extract the flow from the same channel again and plot it in the same graph as the other graph. Double click. I will repeat the process and speed it up. So after pasting the flow after the parameter change, we see that we have two hydrographs on this chart. I expand it and maybe make it larger. We see we have before the parameter change, we have higher peaks. And then after the parameter change, we have lower peaks. This makes a lot of sense because we reduce the curve number, which means we are allowing more water to infiltrate than becoming surface runoff. So what you are doing essentially when you are performing a manual calibration, you are changing parameters repeatedly whilst checking your model performance. And your aim is to maximize the criteria that you are using if you are using Nash Sutcliff efficiency and also at the same time make the absolute value of the P bias as small as possible. You can also use other efficiency criteria such as R squared, root mean squared, and so on. This is what you would have when you're doing manual calibration. Here, I have put up the model evaluation file from the previous video, and I've added simulation two. This is at the monthly time step. So before changing a parameter, this was the performance simulated one, and it's in the orange. After changing the parameter, you have simulated two, which one is better? So make sure that you are also checking the visual appearance and also the water balance all the time and uh, try to maximize. For instance, in the first case, you have 0 0.45. In the second case, you have 0 0.5, but you have P bus that is slightly worse than before. And that's how you do manual calibration. It's a cumbersome process. It's good that you know what you're doing. It's good beforehand that you have an idea which parameters you should target. Otherwise, you can just use one of the tools to perform an automatic calibration, which will optimize the parameters for you.